close the door to the kitchen? Thank you so much. <coughs> Just before we ended uh, last time, Jeff made a very important point. He said, just take a look <clears throat> at all the contrasts that are being made when Diatima makes the point that their kind of relationship produces a so-called child that can rival Homer and Hesiod and his works. And then, would you not agree, in that same section, he then talks about Lycurgus and Solon, etc. Mm -hmm. And the point Jeff was making is that in all the examples, it doesn't, they don't proceed from a relationship. And uh, that means it, they don't conform to the transmission analogy. <clears throat> right. This is an analogy. A is to B is B is to C. Mean analogy of three terms. So, <clears throat> Diatima then relates to Socrates as a student. And as a consequence, he now becomes a teacher, and he is relating to Agathon. And Diatima could take Socrates through a series of steps, as Socrates was able to take Agathon through a series of steps. And they're different. Socrates is not able to take Agathon as far as Diotima took Socrates, for good reasons, right? Uh, because Socrates had the ability to raise questions. Agathon couldn't, therefore he stuck and couldn't go any further. Now, what do we call this a transmission? put in its place a teacher of violin who has a student. The student then, once they become proficient, can then in turn become a teacher to others. Or, in general, anyone who has an art fits into the structure. And that's why the Ion and the Republic deal specifically with what is an art and why is the idea of art significant. Now, uh, when you work through the relationships here, there are seven key relationships. We can talk about what is the way in which she relates to Socrates. How does Socrates respond to Diotima? And in a similar way, we can go back and see how Socrates related to Agathon and Agathon related to Socrates. Then we can go back into the text and we can make an analysis of the difference between these two teachers. Equally well, we can make a relationship between these two. And we should be able to see what process is involved for Socrates to become a teacher. There is no relationship between these extremes. Therefore, there are only seven possible relationships in the transmission analogy. Now, equally well would you agree we're dealing with very key important issues in the first paragraph of Diotima's speech.
Would you agree, in the dialogue itself, Socrates makes the point, now we're comparing student against student, and he says, you know what, I started off saying the very, very much the same thing that Agathon did. And therefore they both start off with ignorance. Therefore we want to know, how do you go from here to here, from here to here, here to here? These are the key relationships These are the states within which they move Would you agree we found a very interesting quote where Socrates says oh what you said to Atima is right And then he wants to know exactly what are the causes and the reasons, etc., for love. Now the question is, does this dialogue present Socrates as moving from the second, right, from the second transition or understanding to knowing? Does he make it? And whether he does or not, does it fit into the structure of the work itself when you look at it as a piece of architecture or ordered structure? Um, now, take a look at one, two, three. We'll call these the transitions. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you can go back into the text and you can talk about what it took for, for Socrates to move from ignorance to right opinion and from right opinion to understand it. We can provide steps. We can check it out in the text. And luckily enough, this third transition, I had a discussion with Brad, and he said he would be going through an explanation of this third stage. Yeah. All right. yeah. No yeah. So, if you have any questions about this, you know who to ask. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, enough background. We jump into it? Okay, any questions about this before we jump? Good. Yes. Good. Could you go over the number of uh, relationships there is in that? Seven. Area? I didn't see seven. I thought I saw more. That's why. Okay. I was... You see more? Tell me where they are, and I'll agree with you. No, I. That's no, 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 no. I didn't see where you saw seven. Forget what I did. I took what you just yeah, said. You have... saw more. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have said anything. That means you at least see what I've seen. What other ones do you see? Well, I saw Diotima to Socrates. Socrates. No, no, no. You were going to say, in addition to what's here, you saw more. Well, you said seven. Uh, forget what I said. You saw more. In there. Well, good, but I'll write it down. Don't worry about it. I don't it. see the seven you saw. I see eight. Pardon, I thought you were going to advancing the notion. You, you see eight. I see eight. Go ahead. What's the eight? Uh, well, let's see. Diotima to Socrates. Socrates to Diotima. Diotima to Socrates. I presume you're counting. Yeah, that's one, two, three, three four, five, six. Seven, eight. Pardon me, you have to tell me where is the eighth. Well, you have the first two going back and forth. That's one, two. I understand that, Jana. There are seven here. Point them out. I, I'm maybe I'm not understanding <coughs> what you mean when you, you say. You just did. Seven. You went to eight. Come on. One. You know how to add. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven. seven. Wait a minute. 
But you're you're breaking it down. The first two are broken down as one, two, three, four. Why aren't you breaking down the five and six into going one way and, and the other? Gina, I don't know what you mean by breaking down. I showed a relationship between that's a breaking down it, two terms and relating. It doesn't go uh, well. In one and two, one goes one way, the other goes the other way. Be on five and six, you're not doing that, but you have oh. the arrows going oh. that way. Oh. 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 That's quite true. So that's where I got eight. No, because they don't relate as teachers to one another in the dialogue. They do not relate to one another as teachers. Okay. So why is that five then? Why is it even a relationship? Pardon me. In order to have a relationship, you have to have two things going in two, two, in two ways. Do you right. Know? If, if they do not relate, there's no relationship between them. Therefore, all we need to do is to talk about the role of teachers, how they differ. Oh, okay. Okay. No, you don't. You don't. Answer. No. Thank you. Therefore, you you know, just see no the... interrelationship, and therefore you cannot have two arrows going. Okay. Face closed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Anything going anywhere else? Okay. Back in the text, right? <coughs> oh, by the way. It's really important, if you want to see this exquisitely, say, with thoughtfulness, that you master, memorize Propolis's 148 and the elements of theology. <coughs> memorize it, look at it, study it, reflect on it. Then this will come alive in a much more interesting way. Number again, 140. What? Again, I can get you a copy for uh, two or three times the price. The number again. One, four, eight. Mm -hmm. Propolis is one, four, eight proposition and the elements of theology. Right out? Okay. Would you agree, this is easy from now on, all we need is a couple of readers and we're free. Right? You're smiling at the right time. Want to be the reader? Sure. Loud? By the way, we can have fun seeing how she relates to Socrates and how Socrates relates to her in a very interesting passage. So uh, let's do it. We're on page uh, 106. 106, we stopped at 104. Pardon, <coughs> uh, 104, thank you. 104? Excuse me? We don't need so Yes. Please. These are some of the mysteries? These are some of the mysteries. Uh, Pardon? Is it in your way? <clears throat> okay, what do you got? Ready to go? Yeah. But where, though? We're on page 104, which should be about 110. 
or these are some of the mysteries. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred nine okay. E, okay. two hundred eleven two ten. These are some of the mysteries. Okay. These are some of the mysteries of love, Socrates, in which perhaps even you may become initi an initiate. But as far as as for the higher revelations, which initiation leads to, if one approaches in the right way, I do not know if you could ever become adept. At least I will instruct you, she said, and no pains will be lacking. You try to follow if you no, can. Try to follow if you can. Right? You try to follow if you can. Um, how is she relating to him at this point? Put down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does she have high expectations for the gentleman no. called Socrates? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Not if you take her literally. <laughs> right? So maybe even we have a chance. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, she was a prophet and able to, you know, uh, help the city. She helped the city ward off a plague, but she can't tell whether Socrates would be able to be adept enough in this situation. So I found that interesting. If you want to hold that point, that would show the opposite if you fix on what you just said. But let's go on and we'll take that up after if you'd like. It is necessary that one who approaches in the right way should begin this business young and approach beautiful bodies. Hey, let's see what he's going to do with beautiful bodies. Go ahead. First, if his leader leads aright, he should love one body and there beget beautiful speech. Oh. What does he have to do? Now you have to watch four uses of the word begetting. The lobe has an interesting take on the lobe has an interesting take on, it says, um, beget beautiful speech there, I think, in the um, rouse. But in the lobe, it says, therein, right? Engender beautiful converse therein, which um, is, of course, logos, beautiful logos. But it's, it sounds like then, and rather than just giving a speech, which is the possibility of the first translation, the second suggests that it's going to be with the beloved, you know, that, or in the beloved, that you're going to get the beloved in, involved in beautiful logos. <coughs> so well, that's, at least it leaves the real. One of the essential things in the symposium is to translate all references ah. <coughs> to N. And if a translator overlooks it, he misses the role of N. I wanted to mention too that beget is very often here the word tokos and tiktain, the verb is tiktain, verb is tokos, and it means to bear fruit. And if you see that as bearing fruit, it kind of like, it, at least it helped me to more clearly understand um, uh, the dynamic, the pregnancy, and then the bringing to birth. Mm -hmm. So, We will use it, yes. Stop us many times, go ahead. Then, he should take notice that the beauty in one body is akin to the beauty in another body. Oh, he's got to look around. They're all beautiful. Their beauty is akin. I'll be darned. Well, what follows if you see that? Uh, and if we must pursue beauty in essence, it is great folly not to believe that the beauty in all such bodies is one and the same. Ah. When he has learned this... Ah, takes a while. Some people linger on these first two steps. <laughs> he must become the lover of all beautiful bodies. Love them all. 
and relax the intense passion for one. Why? Because he loves all. Huh? Because he loves all. Because if they love them all, they have to relax their intense passion for, for one. one. Yeah. Otherwise, what? Couldn't love them all. Couldn't love them all. Yeah. It would be a distraction. Yeah. This is where uh, running shoes comes into history. <laughs> Nike. 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 Yeah, Nike. <laughs> Victory. Right, just do it. <laughs> just right. do it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and relax the inten intense passion for one, thinking lightly of it and believing it to be a small thing. Next, he must believe beauty in souls to be more precious than beauty in the body, so that if anyone is decent in soul, even if it has little bloom, it should be enough for him to love and care for. Therefore, he's got a more work to do. Mm-hmm and to beget and seek such talks as will make young people better. Is that another? Begetting. Begetting? Yeah. Yes or no? Come on. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Give us a new one. Beget and seek. <clears throat> so he's, right? Yes. Such talks. That he may moreover be compelled to, to contemplate the beauty in our pursuits and customs <clears throat> and to see that all beauty is of one and the same kin and that so he may believe that bodily beauty is a small thing next <coughs> he must be led from practice to knowledge that he may see again the beauty in different kinds of knowledge and directing his gaze from now on towards beauty as a whole he may no longer dwell upon one like a servant, content with the beauty of one boy or one human being or one pursuit, and so be slave or slavish and petty. But he should turn to the great ocean of beauty, and in contemplation of it give birth to many beautiful and magnificent speeches and thoughts in, ab in the abundance of philosophy, until being strengthened and grown therein he may catch sight of some one knowledge the one science of this beauty now to be described try to attend hold. so that's another be birth right? hold it um, when he moves from practice to knowledge could you pick it up yes next he must be led from practice to knowledge, that he may see again the beauty in different kinds of knowledge, and directing his gaze... In different gaze. kinds of knowledge. <clears throat> no, no, no. Go ahead. And directing his gaze from now on towards beauty as a whole. He may no longer dwell upon one like a servant, content with the beauty of one boy or one human being or one pursuit, and so be slavish and petty, but he should turn to the great ocean of beauty, and in contemplation of it, give birth to many beautiful and magnificent speeches. Is that another birth? You get it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. To many magnificent speeches and thoughts, in the abundance of philosophy, until being strengthened and grown therein, he may catch sight of some one knowledge, the one science of this beauty now to be described. What does he need to gain in this last step? Why does he need... <coughs> what in addition does he need? Strength See, and growth. Some, yeah, they're two very important words. Yes. Yes, strength and growth. Yeah. Yes. Right, he gains strength. Why? I think because he's going to be contemplating beauty in itself. But I don't know. As far as the text hasn't gotten there yet, has it? Has it? Has it? There's also the birth. Because it's going to take a hell of a lot of strength to endure that experience. Yes. Right. And growth. This is the line of growth. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Now, this is really very curious. Um, 
and in contemplation of it, give birth to many beautiful and magnificent speeches and thoughts in the abundance of philosophy. What do you got to do? A lot of work. What do you have to do? Make Maybe beautiful, beautiful and magnificent. magnificent. That's what you need. Right? Speeches and thoughts in the abundance of philosophy. Uh, what would that be like, Mark? Would be like seeing something that you've done in the past in a new light and being able to put philosophy words mm -hmm. into See, mm -hmm. what's that doing in that phrase? Mm -hmm. That many beautiful and magnificent speeches. Let's take that out. It's, all right. it's not too important. Uh, is it? Yeah. Why? Ref uh, that's reflecting, I think. Reflecting upon something and then putting it into words. Well, that would be the content of your speeches and your discussions. Yeah, it would. That would precede them, so it, it would be internalizing that. You're internalizing it, right. Yeah. Well, you're also, you're also sharing it. You're also sharing it with another person. So in this one, you're doing self, yeah. the other, others, yeah. self and others. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're yeah. transmitting, you're transmitting like in the, pardon, pardon? it would be a transmission if you're talking about. It's a transmission. You have to transmit. He's now doing it. Yeah. Right. Like, like Jayatima to Socrates or Socrates That's right. Right. to Agatha. Right. And you have to be very articulate for people to understand. Mm -hmm. right. So, look here, with this, he may catch sight Linda? Oh, well, the thought occurs to me, did Socrates make great speeches? Pardon me? Socrates did Socrates make? make great speeches? He obviously had thoughts on philosophy. He asked questions. I don't remember. Let, let me, I, I know who to ask. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. This Where? Is right here in the in symposium. He's giving... That's, no, this is Diotima. But he's relating Diotima. But do you have the question in mind? You're, you should be an expert does, on this. Does Socrates... Does Socrates ever show any evidence of giving any beautiful and magnificent yes, speeches in the abundance of philosophy? Twice, yes. What? In, in the ion, he does. Oh! Oh. So two, oh. Two good. And you'd call it beautiful? <laughs> Very. I'll yeah. be darned. See? That's what happens when you read the ion. <laughs> hey, what's this May doing? Well, mm. well, wouldn't it be okay, either? Here, I'll tell you what. Change it to will. Well, they, or, or after. <laughs> Or something. Oh, what's this doing in there? Barbara, do you, you ever study grammar? I sometimes. What does May do? It means it's not uh, April. a necessary fall. It's not no, ne it's April. not necess necessarily, it won't necessarily follow. It could necessarily follow. Mm. It's conditional. It could follow, not necessarily. Does that mean at that level you must there continue there. to be a lover? At that level, he, he must continue to be a lover and pursue. Do I think so? Um, uh, you mean when you're... That's good. Yeah. More. Yeah. Well, the strength, you have to strength, become strong in, in, in those characteristics. So it would seem, too, though, that there's also a sense in which... Well, I've heard it said that the ideas are not dead things that... But rather they are themselves alive and vital and therefore they you can ready yourself for them but but, but there may not be a necessity if one then the other right ah you're just setting up the condition condition for it 
I see. <clears throat> and what does he call this stuff? Philosophy. If you catch sight of it? Oh, catch sight of it. Um, some, of some, some one knowledge. knowledge. Some one knowledge. Therefore, the experience of it would be knowing. Mm -hmm. Does that go back to the first paragraph oh. again of Giotima's speech, the four different states of mind? Yes. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. This and only this is called knowledge in the Platonic world. Mm -hmm. The experience. Right, Evan? Thomas Taylor calls them deanoetic conceptions in prolific. Well, do it again, please. Yeah. I like this. I like Thomas Taylor. Oh, um, betaking himself to the ample sea of beauty and surveying it with the eye of intellect. He begets many beautiful and magnificent reasonings and deonoetic conceptions in, in the deonoetic and understanding, philosophy. right? Ah. So thus being strengthened and increased, he perceives what that one science is, which is so singular. You use the word science always for the word knowledge. As to be the knowledge of so singularly great a right. right. And we've worked quite a bit tonight. Uh, would you care to go further or pass it on to your, your neighbor, or how do you want to do it? Up to you. Uh, I'll pass it along. Okay, whoever shall be guided. <coughs> Me. Loud. Whoever shall be guided so far towards the mysteries of love by contemplating beautiful things rightly in due order, due order is approaching the last grade. The last stage. Suddenly, he Fine, will that's behold. The most, one of the most key, key points in Plato. Suddenly. <laughs> Bang. Suddenly. Go ahead. Bang. <laughs> Suddenly, he will behold a beauty marvelous in its nature. That very beauty, Socrates, for the sake of which all the earlier hardships had been born. Yeah, because it's very difficult to go up these steps, you know, loving them all. It's a hardship. <laughs> yeah, so right. someone's got to do it. Yeah, it's very difficult. Arduous. <laughs> so if you see someone in this pursuit, you know, drop a cheer for them and give them words of encouragement. <laughs> go ahead. In the first place, everlasting and never being born nor perishing, neither increasing nor diminishing. Secondly, not beautiful here and ugly there, not beautiful now and ugly then, not beautiful in one direction and ugly in another, not beautiful in one place and ugly in another, Again, this beauty will not show itself to him like a face or hands or any bodily thing at all, nor as a discourse or a science, nor indeed as residing in anything, as in a living creature or in earth or heaven or anything else, but being by itself, with itself, always in simplicity. While all the beautiful things elsewhere partake of this beauty in such manner, that when they are born and perish, it becomes neither less nor more, and nothing at all happens to it. So that when anyone by right... Okay, hold the tension. Look here. Go back and put them positive that were expressed negatively. Like never, never being born or perishing. Hmm. Okay, the first one is easy. Everlasting. All right? Eternal. Mm -hmm. Everlasting. Right. Rather than all the others. It's, it, the same size. It doesn't increase or decrease. It's the same. 
everywhere. Increase. Not changing. Everywhere beautiful. Well, everywhere never beautiful. being born or perishing, how would you put it? Immortal. Uh, immortal. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal and subsistent. That's Without good. beginning or end. So Something that's eternal. 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 <laughs> it's time that super subsists. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep going. Either increasing or diminishing is unchanging. Uh, if it doesn't increase or diminish, then throughout, what is it? Keeps a static, continuous quality moving through the whole of it. Is that right? More. Not beautiful now and ugly then. Yeah. Beautiful. Right? Th throughout the experience, Timeless. from beginning to end, there's a constancy. Mm -hmm. the constant quality persists mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Come on. Unconditional. Always the same Not line. beautiful in one direction and ugly in another, therefore, the right, constant, no, no variation. <laughs> Within it. <coughs> Everywhere and nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's always the same by itself, with itself. Yeah. It's not physical, agree? Not like a face or hands? It's not an idea. Those are negative. Right? Those are negatives. It's not a system of thought. No positive thing. Agree? Not a system of thought? Mm -hmm. Right. That's a negative, of course. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stick that in there. <laughs> All right. Um, what's the difference between no variation within it and permeates continuous quality? Well, there's different ways of talking about continuous. Uh, permeates. Uh, this has to do with... Uh, internally and then the other externally? Pardon? Is this one internally and the other externally? There is no X or N. Okay, so now. <laughs> uh, by the way, it's different in the Thomas Taylor. Could you check the Thomas Taylor? Watch the difference. Did you read the same thing? From Shutland. Beauty. Okay. First thing. Whoever then is advanced thus far in the mysteries of love by a right and regular progress of contemplation. Approaching now to perfect intuition, suddenly he will discover, bursting into view, a beauty astonishingly admirable. That very beauty to the gaining a sight of, which the aim of all his preceding studies and labors had been directed. A beauty whose peculiar characters are these. In the first place, it never had a beginning, nor will ever have an end, but always is, and always flourishes in perfection unsusceptible of growth or of decay. In the next place, it is not beautiful only when looked at one way or seen in one light, at the same time that viewed another way or seen in some other light, it is far It's not beautiful. relative, see? So yeah. It's not relative. That's not the beautiful. idea of constancy <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. Or seen in one light. Right. If, no matter where you are in respect to it, it's not relative to the observer. Right. It's not beautiful only at certain times or with reference only to a certain circumstances of things. Being at other times or when things are otherwise circumstanced, quite the contrary. Nor is it beautiful only in some places or as it appears to some persons. Whilst in other places and to other persons, its appearance is the reverse of beautiful. 
nor can this beauty, which is indeed no other than the beautiful itself, ever be the object of imagination. As if it had some face or hands of its own, or any other parts belonging to body, nor is it some particular reason, nor some particular knowledge. It resides not in any other being, not in any animal, for instance, nor in the earth, nor in the heavens, nor in any other part of the universe. But simple and separate from other things, it subsists alone with itself and possesses the <coughs> essence eternally uniform. Alone by itself and itself by itself. All other forms which are beauteous participate of this. But in such a manner they participate that by their generation or destruction, this suffers no diminution, receives no addition, nor undergoes any kind of alteration. Whenever from those lower beauties, reascending by the right way of love, a man begins to gain sight of, his supreme beauty, of this supreme beauty, he must have almost attained some, somewhat of this end. So that from learning, he may come at last to that perfect learning, which is the learning solely of that beauty itself, and may know at last that which is the perfection of beauty. There in life and there alone, we, my dear Socrates, said the inspired woman, is life, for, is life worth living for man while he contemplates beauty itself. If ever you see this, it will seem to you to be far above gold and raiment and beautiful boys and men whose beauty you are now entranced to see. And you and many others are ready so long as they see their darlings and remain ever with them. If it could be possible not to eat or drink, but only to gaze at them and be with them, what indeed should we think? If it were given to one of us to see beauty undefiled, pure, unmixed, not adulterated with human flesh and colors and other much other mortal rubbish, if we could behold beauty in perfect simplicity, do you think it a mean life for a man? to be looking hither and contemplating that and abiding with it? Do you not reflect that there only will it be possible for him when he sees the beautiful with the mind which alone can see it to give birth not to likeness as a virtue since he touches no likeness but to reality since he touches reality. When he's given birth to real virtue and brought it up, will it not be granted him to be a friend of God and immortal if any man ever is? Right? Look. <clears throat> <All right. coughs> this is beauty. <coughs> What's another word for it? We are. Yeah, Other word, truth. <clears throat> now, notice that that is not an ultimate state in philosophy. Right? It lacks. It's deficient. What, what does that mean, an ultimate state? It's not a, a fixed, perfect state that's unchanging? Do it again, please. What do you mean by that truth and reality and beauty oh, are not a perfect well, state? Because, wait, 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 make sure I have your, your question. Does he not say that what he encounters is reality? Mm -hmm. Do you not reflect that there are only, well, the beauty you seen by the man only can see it, but one touches not it? virtue but touches reality, right? Mm -hmm. right? Touches reality. Mm -hmm. So that's another word for this experience. The whole process? Not the process. The experience itself mm -hmm. is the nature of ultimate reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. It happens to be magnificently beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it truly is 
therefore true. But it's not an ultimate state. There's a that one has to. What one, one, what does one have to do? Nurture it. Give birth to something out of it. The final begetting. Transmission again. So that means that it's not the goal. That's what, that's what that means. It's an ultimate experience, but it's not sufficient. Okay. It's an ultimate experience. There's something beyond experience. Yes. Uh, I'd like to challenge that idea. Like, I don't hear you. This whole idea that there's something that needs to be given birth to out of it? No. Yeah. Really? I thought you got to raise it up. Isn't that well, true? what do you mean? you got to raise it up then. Raise if, you don't, up. if you don't, what follows? Uh, you're not a man. Then. You're not li living a, wife, a life worth living. <laughs> is, it necessary, is it necessary in all of these begettings that something has to emerge from it? Absolutely. So therefore, when we're here, look at this. Since he touches reality, and when he has given birth to real excellence and brought it up, what do you have to give birth to? A real, real excellence. excellence, sometimes called virtue. <coughs> and what do you have to do? Bring it up. Bring it up. You got to raise it. You got to develop it. I like that. But how? Why wouldn't the real excellence be the experience of being? Blah, 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 blah. Why wouldn't the, the, the real excellence be that very experience of beauty itself? I, I don't, I'm not with you. Well, I'm wondering how to understand real excellence. Like, what is real excellence? Oh, okay. And I made a connection okay. in this paper that I've written. Of course. Between beauty, the experience of, of beauty itself and real excellence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's not enough. I'm not it's saying I, I read it correctly, but. It's incomplete. That means a person isn't finished. They've got to give birth to what's real and a real excellence. They've got to d develop it, nurture it. After that kind of experience, then, you, then you cultivate. You, you, can stack a, you can stack a whole bunch of reports of all the difficulties people have had after they get in this kind of an experience. Right? Wow. All the Roshis and Yogis and everything else, are they finished or do they still have problems? <laughs> From the literature, yes or no? Yeah. Probably. Probably. They're working on. Because there's still something to do. They may experience that. They say, okay, I'm done. No. <laughs> They're doomed. They'll play out their problem. That's the nature of ignorance. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. Well, Therefore, you, to get out of it, you have to get out of the universe. <laughs> and that's what Steve uh, often says. Yes. Right, Steve? Um, see? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no, no, no. see? I got my approval. So what are the five births? What? There's five things that are given. I don't know. Um, what? There's five birthings that take place in this spiritual Yeah, world. yeah. There are four there, and this is the final. No, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, what five, five are they? We got one more small paragraph, and then let's jump in a bunch of questions. Therefore, we need another reader. Thank you for volunteering. This then favors. This then favors and gentlemen, as what Diotima said, and I am quite convinced. And being convinced, I try to persuade other people also to believe that to attain this possession, one could not find. Not easily find a better helper for human nature than love. And so I say that every man ought to honor love. And I honor love matters myself. And I practice them particularly and encourage others. And now, and now, uh, and now, and always, I sing the praises of love's power and courage as much as I am able. And let this be my speech of eulogy to love, if you please, Phaedrus. Or call it anything else you like. 
I practice them particularly, right? And encourage others. Did he say did he say he made it? No. No. But is there a whole description of it? You can now understand it? So Socrates should have then reached the point of understanding, not knowing. Right? And that's why it's real great that the dialogue keeps on going, because it's not finished. So the state of knowing is not a a terminal destination, if you were to get to wisdom. Knowing is a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, knowing is a problem. It becomes a terminus. Well, it could even be permanent. Mm-hmm. Even in one sense, that's impossible. But that's, what I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm alluding to. It doesn't seem to be but completely possible. See, even if this were to continue, it's, then nothing would be brought to birth out of it. Would, would, Therefore, it would be inadequate. If it were to get to a fixed state, nothing would be born out of it. Fixed, fixed state. Fixed. Or, no, or a state a of perfection. State. No, it's not a fixed state. Because yeah. that's the problem of the guy who had this experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, they asked him what happened to his fingers. Mm-hmm. He said, well, yeah, I was in that state. I couldn't make distinctions. And then I found out I was eating all the way up to my thumb until someone stopped me and I thought it was a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's lucky he didn't go all the way to the elbow. <laughs> no, if this is if this is the way it's described, right? It can only be maintained for a certain period of time. And uh, <clears throat> Something has to, and when, see, there's a future, and when is brought up, the relax is brought up, nurture it. Then they become a friend of God and mortal if any man ever is. Now, do you remember Lyndon's question two weeks ago? He said, I have this question about what is the cause of beauty? Remember? I cribbed it. Remember that was the question he raised? I cribbed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Barbara, coming in tonight, she said I I could uh, explain this to Lyndon, but you didn't get a chance to do it, did you? I know. <clears throat> but you did have an answer to that question. Yeah. Could you risk sharing it? Yeah. Uh, sure. It's in a it's in a quote, um, which was. Uh, we were talking about the, the cause of, um, what's my paragraph? We are on page 100. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Were we? Uh, um. Pardon me, 102. Okay, thanks. And what do you think Socrates to be the cause of love and desire? Right, right. And so, Linda and I, Pierre, Pierre said to me, he, we, I, nobody pushed for that answer last week. You know? And so I went home and started thinking about the question of what the cause was, right? And if you look at the next paragraph, uh, well, because he ends with, um, that, he ends that paragraph with, why diatema? This is just why I've come to you. As I said, I knew I needed a teacher. Pray tell me the cause of this and all the other love, Lord. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he ends with the... So then, and the next line says, Well then, if you believe love is by nature love that would love of that which we agreed on, don't be surprised. For on the same principle as before, here mortal nature seeks always, as far as it can, to be immortal. Right. Therefore... Going to the end of the eleventh paragraph. What is the end of it? Eleventh paragraph. He end becomes of the a paragraph? friend of God and that's immortal. That's right. And immortal. Never be said to yes. Yes. So that's an experience, therefore, of another word, the very nature of immortality.
Not, not an experience though, right? It's not enough to just experience it. She mumbles. Yeah. <laughs> Again. As long as you're mumbles, we're safe. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's drink for mumbling. <laughs> Was I mumbling? Come on, you're cooking? Come on. It's not an experience, though, this becoming a friend of God and immortal if any man ever is. This guy is transcended experience. This is like the... This is not transcending experience. The 24-7 contemplator. I mean... His doors are always open. Where does it suggest transcending experience? Um, the raising to... The fully raising... This is an experience. Show experience. me where it transcends it. Weren't you speaking of the transcendence yourself earlier? Oh, you like to just assume a transcendence? No, no, not assuming. Um, well, yeah, I guess assuming. Yeah, okay. All but right. I like to assume things myself. Hopefully, it's a textually based... And that's why I often go to racetracks. <laughs> yeah, teacher. Yeah. You did hear that, that Ingmar has... Ingmar, much like Phaedrus, has a doctrine he has under his cloak. Oh, well, and that's... And the, the doctrine is that he is is uh, right that he has a doctrine that the yeah, experience is the birth this experience. the experience is what is brought to birth the experience of beauty itself I, is I the mean fifth conception is the fifth the fifth begetting that's his position so I while agree. he he pretends I to pretend. I agree let's oh. agree well, then there's a sixth <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, um, <laughs> look, because I got a good teacher, I just want to stick with the language of the dialogue. It, it's described as a nurturing, a raising, like I call it a raising to manhood, the vision of beauty itself. Um, Is there something one has to nurture from this experience? Absolutely. Out of this experience? Real excellence. I guess there must be some birth. Oh, probably a whole bunch, I would imagine. Mm. Mm. Two things, then. you got to give it to birth and nurture. Yeah, both. Yeah, okay. So there's a sixth birth as well right. as nurturing. I'll go for seven if you want yeah, to. Yeah, you know, throw in okay. a bazillion. Right. <coughs> talked about uh, the samadhi you don't go in and out of. That's right. There's no samadhi at all. How does... You said earlier that, that this couldn't be continued, right? So... Um, <coughs> This is called <coughs> Sabi Kalpa Samadhi. Sabi Kalpa Samadhi. Kalpa. In Hinduism, the Samadhi that you go in and out of, there's no Samadhi at all, is Sabi Kalpa. <coughs> kalpa, infinite time, Sabi brought together. Right? Near is the negative, beyond it. And that would be continuous. And you don't catch this. That is explored in Plato's Republic, not in the Symposium. Oh. Mm. Yes. So, Pierre, how come Socrates says he's barren of all conceptions? How is it that Socrates, what? Says that he's empty of all births in the Phaedrus. Uh, the in the Theotetus, you mean? Theotetus, pardon me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I think you need, a, you need the quote. Another assignment? Okay. Pardon me. You need the quote to see the point that he's making. Absolutely. Can, can you bring it back Can you? Is it possible you can repeat it? Um, the God will not allow me to give birth to any wise invention of my own. Well, I mean, you spent no. 15 years studying this no. stuff. No. 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 I, how about you? Do you got it? There's no wisdom born from my own soul. Yes. Hmm. Wisdom is not born from your soul. Therefore, Why is invention? Isn't it? he's barren. There's nothing there. Barren. Okay. Have to have some mobile. Okay. Anything else? We can wrap it up. Whoa! No. One other. Oh, I'm still interested. I, I want to work more on that idea of suddenly, <laughs> in respect to this so-called step-by-step ladder, and then suddenly. Right. May. You may have it. Right. Uh, I know people who've had that experience sitting in, in places I don't want to mention, you know? I mean, it didn't go through any particular training. 
bull. Of course. And they're, they're, of course. And, There's some uh, people who walk down the street and bang. Yeah. And nothing preceded it. That's right. And, and nothing followed from it either. But uh, Well, look what they're missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> At least you came back. No, it's not denying that there are other ways of doing it. But, uh, and but some I'm spontaneously. Of, but I'm thinking the words of suddenly. Pardon me? I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm viewing it through this where gradual and sudden have a, a, a meaning around uh, enlightenment experience. Yes. yes. Whether, whether uh, enlightenment comes as a function of gradual development or whether enlightenment just comes suddenly. And then from that enlightenment, you can cultivate. In other words, sudden enlightenment, gradual cultivation. Yeah, this is cultivation. Way. That's right. Enlightenment cultivation. That's what it is. That's right. <clears throat> Just like Korean Buddhism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark. If you have it spontaneously without the steps, there's sure. no way that you can nurture. I, could be, um, I forget the author's name for a moment. Uh, the guy who wrote Cosmic Consciousness, Which Burke, I think his name is, B-U-R-K-E. Buck. Buck. B-U-C-K. He said he was at a party one evening with a group of friends and uh, poetry reading. And he walked home and bang, had the experience. Well, Oh, so yeah. My uncle Louis you're making had it when point, he shifted right? to uh, Marty's making Marty's <laughs> making a different point, though. Okay. Marty's making a different point. Please, would you make it? I think Marty would be best to make it. No, no, it. no, please, help. Well, I may have missed it. Please, I'd appreciate it. Well, I missed it, too, because he was interrupted. <laughs>